So we're about to start the last week of school for our grade schoolers, and kind of based on the schedule, you know, this last week was the last Wednesday I was able to, to teach the sixth graders, and it's been a good year with them. They're a good class. Uh, we've had some ups and downs, but they're a good class, and sometimes I expect a lot from them, and I have to remember that they're just, they're like, they're sixth graders. I don't know how old sixth graders are, but they're, they're about yay big. And two weeks ago, I was in class with them, and we've been going through the sacraments the last couple of months, and we were talking about holy orders. I know a little bit about holy orders, so I got a little excited, and I was talking about the mass, and I was really trying to, to convey to them, this is the point of the homily, so I'll get through it really quick, like, what does a priest do? Like, what does a priest do? And this is kind of a big thing that the priest does, say mass, but there's something within that, that that's very deep. Like, what does a priest do? He offers sacrifice, right? That going back to the Old Testament, like what the priest was, he would offer sacrifice on behalf of the people, right? This is what we're all about to offer a sacrifice, the sacrifice, the unbloody renewal of the sacrifice. On Calvary, my poor sixth graders had no idea where I was trying to lead them when I was getting to this point. And uh, I was like, what do we do at Mass? Like, we pray. It's like, it's great. Cool, you pray. What are we doing at Mass? Crickets. All right, guys, like, what is the priest doing? What are we, what are we doing at Mass? And like, we pray. I'm like, I swear. If you say pray one more time. <laughs> well, they did. And I was like, guys, you don't even know how to pray. Oh, my gosh. You'd have thought I called their mother, like, a cow or something. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? We know how to pray. That's so offensive. I can pray. I was like, guys, I really hate to break your bubble, but y'all don't know how to pray. And I was like, we can pray. All right, how do you pray? And it was the most stereotypical way that, to be honest with you, none of us know how to pray. And that's the point of this homily. Because we treat God as Santa Claus and a life vest. That is 98% of our experience in prayer. Lord, I need something. Giddy up. Guys, that's a very low type of prayer. Lord, I need a life vest. While serious, still pretty low on the whole prayer thing. But it really stuck with me how offended they were as sixth graders that I could accuse them of not knowing how to pray. And I've been praying with it the last couple weeks. You know, what is that? And I, and I think it, it comes down to our own pride that, of course, I would be someone who knows. I go to a Catholic school. I'm at St. Patrick's, the best parish on this side of the river in St. Charles. I don't know. It's a pretty good parish. I think it's pretty good. Spiritual pride is a big thing. It's something that I'm not going to say I'm completely over, but at times in my life, it's been a problem. I'm pretty good at being a Catholic. I know how to pray. That's not, I, I really have, I would challenge someone who, who says that. Just flip it over on the other side. The Lord has a lot more to reveal to me about what prayer is. The Lord has a lot to show me with the help of the Holy Spirit, that advocate that we're preparing for through the gospel today, leading up to the Ascension and Pentecost. What, what does prayer look like? How is the Lord calling for me to be in relationship and in prayer? That entire, that is, that is a very small shift, but the outcomes, specifically over like a life, are drastically different. I know how to pray. I don't want to know where that goes. Lord, teach me to pray. That docility, that childlike state of mind, that openness and humility, the Lord can work with a lot. It's that openness first that hardness of heart. The Lord has taught us how to pray. The disciples, they went to him. Lord, John, his disciples and followers, you taught them how to pray. How do we pray? What did he give us? The Our Father. We could all say the Our Father right now. We could rattle it off. But like so many things, it is just repetition. 
When, when was the last time you actually spent time reflecting on what those words are? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We've just been given the first way to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. To just adore the Lord, that your name is, is holy, that your name is good, and the fact that we're in relationship with you is good. Now we're praying. Now we're spending time in prayer. Now we're opening our heart to ask the Lord to get us to know him in a deeper way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I've got a whole plan. I know what I sh should have in my life and, and I, I've got everything figured out. Just make it happen and I'll take care of the rest. I'm sure you've got a great plan for your life. I'm sure you've got it all figured out. But God created you for something more. And it's going to be a little different than what you have figured out for your life. One of the most profound conversations I ever had with prayer was a friend of mine. He was talking about his mother speaking to him. And he said, prayer is not about getting what you're asking for, but allowing yourself to be okay with what the Lord has in store for you. Right? When we pray, are we asking the Lord to change and to conform to our understanding of our life and reality? Is the Lord changing for us? Or are we changing for him? Just honestly check your heart. Are you asking the Lord to change for you? Or are you trying to change to the Lord who created you to be? What is the Father's will? That's what you were created for, to hard prayer. We might not like the answer, but that's what's going to get you to heaven. You know, give us, a, give us today our daily bread. All right, now we can start to ask for things. But first and foremost, brothers and sisters, we need to adore the Lord. We need to just sit and honor him, to be grateful for everything that he's given us, and to just ask him with that childlike curiosity, Lord, show me how to love you. This is why we have a new adoration chapel. If you haven't spent time in there, I invite that you do. The, the whole vibe of that room, now St. Michael's cha Chapel, has changed. It's a different place when you're in there praying. And just sit in the Lord and, and bask in front of the creator of the universe. I invite you all, I challenge you all, to have that docility of heart. To be, to be humble enough, childlike enough to say, Lord, maybe I don't know how to pray. Show me. And with the gift of the Holy Spirit, he will.